I want to continue on this discussion and see what unions feel about this move. And we're joined by Sean Strickland. He is the executive director of Canada's Building Trades Unions and joins us from Ottawa. Welcome to the program. Good afternoon. I'm hoping maybe you can clarify some things for us. We heard from Chris Ensing there. We don't know how many jobs. We don't know what type of jobs. What are you hearing? Well, I think it's important to recognize that on site right now in Windsor, there's about a thousand Canadian workers, a thousand Canadian construction workers represented by the 14 affiliated unions of Canada's building trades unions. And so there's many Canadian jobs being created. The, the, the challenge is that there has been uh, rumors uh, which have subsequently been substantiated about permits for temporary foreign workers. And there are no temporary foreign workers working on site right now. But last week, some temporary foreign workers from South Korea uh, did show up on the job site, uh, weren't able to complete various competency skills before they could be dispatched onto the job site in English. So they were sent home. And so this really raised the alarm bells around how many more of these workers are scheduled to come on site. Uh, we have been communicating with government officials, trying to get to the bottom of this, and also communicating to government officials that right now in Windsor, we have enough Canadian workers to perform this work. Uh, finally, I'd like to also say that our colleagues at Windsor Essex Building Trades have been reaching out to Nexstar since August, requesting a meeting to get a better understanding of how many skilled tradespeople they need to help build this project. And so there's lots of moving parts here. I think the first thing that needs to happen for us is to have a meeting with Nexstar and discuss what their labor needs are. So let me just, sorry, how many have shown up on site and how many have you heard could potentially show up on site? Because there's construction, but there's also the running of the company. There's two different numbers, yeah, you're right? right? Yeah, you're right, Hannah. So we're, we're, and I think what's happening in news reports, those numbers mm -hmm. are kind of getting melted melted together. Right. So like help us right out here. Now, uh, so right now, right now, from what we understand, it's the same. We have the same information the media has. There was a mm -hmm. press release and some communication back in August around total of 2,500 workers needed. 1,300 of those could be temporary foreign workers. We understand that was related to construction. In terms of what Unifor and my my sister, Lana Payne, may be talking about in terms of workers in the production facility. That's a different issue. We don't know what's happening there. I highly suspect there will not be temporary foreign workers assembling cars. Mostly what happens with temporary foreign workers is they are deployed to execute construction projects. And that's what we're concerned with. We're hearing the same rumors. So far, there are no temporary foreign workers on site performing construction activities. Uh, but there have been some who have reported to work but we're turned away for lack of English competency. Okay, so let me understand this then, because what we're hearing is that, uh, we've seen it, the Windsor police posted photos of a meeting with the South Korean ambassador uh, saying that thousands of international workers could be landing in Windsor in 2024. Would that be the construction ones you're referring to? Yeah, it would be. That would be the construction workers. So that is what has us concerned. And we don't understand where that number is coming from. We were not made aware of any application for temporary foreign workers. And we'd like to have a meeting with the company and the government to really figure out what the heck's going on here, because there are enough workers available, enough construction workers available in Windsor right now to perform the work. So we need to have a meeting to figure out what's going on here. And, now you know, the, the, the really big thing here, Hannah, is that it's this is a, a you know a, a landmark Canadian project. We have um, the potential to really change our Canadian automotive industry here, and lots of government subsidy have gone to this project. And I think the, the owners of the project need to understand quite clearly that we have Canadians who have every right to do this work, and we have Canadians available to do this work. And if there needs to be some inputs from from foreign workers. We'll talk about that, but the first priority for us is to make sure we maximize the number of Canadian jobs on this project. One thing that we have heard is that from uh, the minister is that there has only been one um, 
a permit allowed. Now, is that the one you're talking about, the people who came for construction, or is that for proprietary work? Well, yeah, it's 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 complicated, Hannah. So there's yeah. there's 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 a there's a couple of things, and this temporary foreign worker program. I mean, first of all, the the temporary foreign worker program is basically managed through two separate mi ministries. You have ESDC looks out for the temporary foreign worker program, where you need a labor market impact assessment in order to bring temporary foreign workers in, mm -hmm. and then you also have the international mobility program which is managed under the immigration department where you don't need you don't need a labor market impact assessment so what we understand is that one permit has been issued under ESDC through an LMIA for one worker what we don't know is how many workers have been granted permission under the international mobility program to come and work on this project and that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of yeah uh I'm so thankful you're you're as confused as I am on this. It's just like well, do I sound confused? I'm not, no, I'm not confused. I think I think I understand what's going on, but the problem is is that no one's really telling us what's going on, and I'm not sure if you know, I'm not sure if people in the government really have a full handle on what's going on here. So we've had issues with temporary foreign worker pro programs in in Canada in the past. We've had. Uh, ongoing dialogue with various government officials around the execution of temporary foreign worker programs. And and we need to be consulted. We need to be put into the loop. We need to understand what's going on so we can protect Canadian jobs. And clearly, that's not what's happening here. Let me just ask you this before I let you go. So billions of dollars yeah. invested in this plant. Uh, at the, I remember when they announced it, it's like, oh, lots of jobs for Canadians, thousands of them. Is that still what we should expect to see? One hundred percent. Okay. One hundred percent, and that's and that's what we're we're fighting for. Mm -hmm. I have every confidence at the end of the day, working with the government and with the owner, Next Star, uh, will maximize the number of Canadian jobs on this project. I'm really hopeful that this is just a blip along that path, but we certainly need to get to the bottom of it, and we need to have some discussions with high-ranking officials in government and at Next Star. Okay, Sean Strickland, stay in touch. Uh, thank you for helping us understand this very complicated story. Appreciate your time as always. Absolutely, my pleasure. Mr. Strickland is the Executive Director of Canada's Building Trades Unions.